in the exam you might be asked about a non-UK weather hazard. So your case study of this was Typhoon Haiyan, which was a tropical storm that struck the Philippines in 2013. The Philippines is an EDC, an emerging and developing country, still fairly poor, and it's located in the subtropics, around 800 miles north of the equator in the Pacific Ocean. This is a satellite image taken of the storm, the, the typhoon as it developed. The storm actually got so big that it was over 500 miles across. You can see the clear eye in the centre of the storm, and the strongest winds form in the eye wall surrounding the eye. Tropical storms have got different names depending on the part of the world that they occur. So in the Atlantic, we refer to them as hurricanes. In the Indian Ocean, they're referred to as cyclones. But in the Pacific Ocean, uh, such as where the Philippines are located, we refer to them as typhoons. For a tropical storm to form, it needs warm ocean water of around 26.5 degrees Celsius or more. This chloroplast map shows where the areas of warm water are. And you can see the Philippines here is in that band of water that is getting that direct sunlight and therefore is really warm. So how does that warm water lead to a tropical storm? Well, that warm water means it's easily evaporated. You get rapid evaporation. In fact, the water around the Philippines, where the water was quite shallow, was actually more like 28, 29 degrees. And so this warm water is what fuels the evaporation and the rising air, which fuels the storm. Now what happens is that the rising air that you can see in the diagram uh, rises. The air then cools and condenses high up in the atmosphere to form clouds. As more and more clouds form, the storm grows. And the rapidly rising air creates low pressure at the surface. Air then rushes in to fill that low pressure, and that's what creates the strong winds. These strong winds then push the sea, and it, it's all pushing with such force, because these winds are incredibly powerful, and it causes a bulge in the, in the seawater. And when this water hits land, it creates what we call a storm surge. Now, this storm was so big, it was over 500 miles across, and so that meant that all that water that was up in the sky as clouds fell for days. And so this means that you get flooding in the days after the storm as that rain just keeps falling. So, so in essence, you get three main hazards in a tropical storm. You get the strong winds, you get the storm surge pushed along by the, the strong winds, and you get sustained heavy rainfall. Before we carry on with Typhoon Haiyan, let's just remind ourselves of the difference between a tropical storm and a typhoon like Typhoon Haiyan. Uh, something is called a tropical storm if the surface winds are sustained at a speed of around 39 to 73 miles an hour. If those wind speeds then become sustained at over 74 plus miles an hour, that storm has now grown to become a named storm, such as a typhoon, a hurricane, or a cyclone. And we often give these storms names, like Typhoon Haiyan. Now, Typhoon Haiyan had sustained surface winds of 195 plus miles an hour, meaning it was category five, the top highest category on the Saffir-Simpson scale that's used to measure tropical storms. In fact, it was, it was off the scale, the winds were so strong. And so some key information about this storm. Um, the winds, were, we said, were 195 miles an hour. That's the sustained speed. They actually had gusts of up to 235 miles an hour. And this pushed the sea into the coastline, uh, creating such a bulge that the storm surge was six metres high. Now, that's about the height of our school building. You can see from this picture that the storm was at its most powerful as it struck the Philippines, category five. As the storm hits land, it loses its power because it's no longer got that evaporation of warm water to fuel. Let's now look at the impacts of Typhoon Haiyan. Tacloban was the worst hit city. Unfortunately, because of its location, the water from the storm surge was funneled up between these bits of land here. And so the water uh, smashed into Tacloban and completely um, destroyed it. Over a million people were affected. 
Over 6,300 people were killed, and actually it was largely the storm surge, although the winds would have killed many as well. Often it's, it's debris uh, getting pushed along by the wind that, that can kill people, but the storm surge was what really caused the damage. And you can see the power, uh, powerful enough to drag large boats well inland. Half a million families were made homeless. The cost of this damage was 2.8 billion. You can see the devastation in the picture and many people uh, fleeing their homes with just nowhere to go. In fact, 90% of the city of Tacloban was destroyed. So that means no services, no, no hospitals, no schools, nothing. And because the devastation was so bad, um, people couldn't go back after the storm had finished. Everything was just completely ruined. Longer term, there were impacts as well. This flooded land, the water just not draining away quickly, led to mosquitoes breeding rapidly. And this led to an increase in people suffering from malaria. The responses to Typhoon Haiyan were, were very mixed. The government had set up 1,600 evacuation centres. However, many people ignored the advice to evacuate as they were worried about looters. And also, they didn't realise just how big this storm was going to be. Furthermore, many of the evacuation centres were in areas that were flooded, and so they were no good to anyone. And so actually, the evacuation centres only worked for a small number of people. A state of emergency was, was called, which did release funds for the rescue effort. The, the problem with this was it was very hard to get uh, aid in from foreign countries because the airport was so badly damaged. Countries like the UK and the charity Shelterbox were flying in supplies to help pe keep people alive with essentials such as a tent and medical supplies. Australia donated 28 million in aid. The Red Cross was involved and they were giving out survival tips, uh, things like watching out for live electrical wires immersed in water, which could be a very potential hazard. In the longer term, this aid was used to build shelters for people that were made homeless, and so very slowly but surely, uh, people in the Philippines were able to rebuild their lives. In planning for a future uh, tropical storm that could become a typhoon event, they're spending a lot of uh, time and effort replanting the mangroves along the coast. A mangrove is a plant that can grow in the salt water and it acts as a natural coastal defence. Many of the roads and 560 schools have also been repaired.